Now, let me tell you, after this video goes on YouTube, I'm going to risk in comments, comments, comments on stories of credit care fraud. We all know what credit, credit care, no, 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 credit card fraud is. But do you realize that when someone hacks into your credit card account, your bank account, they can just delete all your information, your credit card information. So, do you, so the people who say, we need more laws to protect people from credit card fraud. I say, you know what? Give me a break. Here are five ways thieves can steal credit card information from thanks to bankrate.com. There's only plenty of ways to do this, but you want to avoid credit, credit card fraud. Sorry. Here is a way. There are ways from bankrate.com that you can realize how you can spot a credit card thief. They come with ingenious ways to steal you. Sometimes they'll just use stuff to pick your pocket. Like the Wood Hunter credit cards, there's credit cards are back then. There are ways to help you spend more money in the economy. Like plenty and plenty of ways. Well, forget it. Bankrate.com will be helping me with this with this topic, but the Balance.com will help will help y'all with ways to avoid credit card credit card fraud. Medicare, Medicare fraud. We're gonna discuss that tomorrow. In the next we're gonna discuss that Tuesday. Now, like plenty of ways. Number one, keep your credit cards safe. You always have to keep your credit cards in the wallet, or keep it, keep your credit cards like somewhere, like out of the house. There are plenty of people out there who just leave their credit cards at the house. They don't realize you can't be leaving your stuff in the pocket because people can then steal something out of your purse, like I don't know, money or money or your credit cards. That's what number one is. Just make sure you, to the ladies out there, make sure that your purse is all the way zipped. And if someone steals the credit card, do you think they could just, what these could do is they could just like take pictures with a, a simple camera or a cell phone. Don't leave the credit card exposed no longer than necessary. Because thieves can find out your, your bank information, your credit card information. They can use that to just just buy stuff like an Xbox or a video game system. Tip number two. Shred anything with your credit card number on it. Don't toss out your credit card billing statements. Don't throw them in a trash. Shred them to keep dumpster divers from getting in the hands of a credit card number. Don't just like throw them in a the trash. Just... That's the same that applies to old credit cards that have been expired and canceled. I'm to, I, I use, let me tell you what I use. I use. When my credit cards, when I get cards expired, I use, I used to make these out of pit. I used to make picks out of these. That shows you. Don't go, you can go a step further to put the shredding pieces in the trash bags. Don't, don't just like put the shredded pieces back to. Don't like 
Ugh, sorry, I can't talk today. Don't actually put the shred piece in trash bags, throw them in the garbage, and then expect for thieves to find out your information. Go to the bank nest and hide your information that way they won't expose you. The only people who can know your information is the is your social security, is your social security, and the police. Number three, don't sign bank credit card receipts. Always verify the amount of your credit card received before signing. If you get a credit card receipt that has blank space sign with a zero in those spaces or write zero in those spaces or draw them through before putting your signature in the card. Otherwise, the cash should correct in an amount and send the purchase of your credit card and card issuer. That, that may be fraud. Avoid giving out your credit card information. Now, this is really crucial because the only people who can you're allowed to give your information to is the bank and the cops. Those are the only information that you can give police to. Plus your social security. Only give out your credit card number or other sensitive information on your calls to initiate customer service using the number at the back of your credit card. Don't return calls to a phone number left in your answering machine or send it to an email. So don't email like a, uh, don't email a telemarketer, give them your credit card information, expect to call him like every day. Also, don't give your credit card number to anyone who calls you requesting the number. Credit card thieves have been known to pose as a credit card issuers and other businesses trick you to give out your credit card number. Number five, be safe with your credit card online. Now, there are many people who can who can hack in the bank. There are many thieves who can hack in their bank accounts and get their information. Here's a tip for you. Do not always stay signed in. Sign out every single time. Just because you're like a famous YouTuber does not mean you can just leave your YouTube account on for everyone else to see and have your expose your password to different others. Like, don't ever do that. Don't click on the email links to everyone pretending you're, you're to be your bank. Credit card company or other business will use your personal information. Even the email looks legitimate. The links are phishing scams on the website. Just make sure you're cautious when you're using credit card online. Only enter your credit card number to secure websites. So if you want to protect your credit card information, I'll find websites that will be helpful, and I'll put the links in the description below so that way you can be you can be so helpful. Just take care of these extra steps will help you go towards your credit card fraud. Number six, report lost stolen credit cards immediately. The sooner you report a missing credit card, the sooner your credit card issuer can cancel your credit card in the event fraudulent charges. Like, listen, just because you got a Discover card and you want to freeze your account, they got to realize that you stole your account. And if you realize you didn't even freeze your account, you're not there. What they're going to do is look at your account and you see you haven't freezed it. So, you, so if you have the, if you have the, if you have Discover card, you have this, the Discover app that allows you to freeze your credit card, go ahead and do it. Like you would have to pay for charges, maybe your credit card. Like one thing, so you look at your, you look at your credit card statement. It's full of charges you know you didn't make. They're common like, out way over the country. And back then, they did a story about con men who just take everything you do, your credit card information, blah blah blah. Write down your credit card information, customer service numbers. So now you ought to. You'll have your credit card is ever missing. Just get a piece of paper, write down the customer service information for your credit card company. Don't ever lose it. If you lose it, you got you. You're not gonna remember it. Because if you don't remember, 
If you don't remember once your credit card is stolen, you're doomed. Number seven, review, review your billing statements each month. Unauthorized charges your credit card are the first indicator of a credit card fraud. If you notice a charge you didn't make, no matter how small, report the charge to your credit card issuer immediately. Your credit card issuer will tell you whether you should close your account and avoid credit card, credit card fraud. Meaning that if you didn't make the charges, someone hacked into your account. All right. Make strong passwords to keep them safe. Don't be making short sure passwords like eight letter word passwords. Make a really, really strong password to them. They will get in your password. And if you can't remember your password, write it down on a piece of paper. Once you write down a piece of paper, hide it somewhere safe where nobody can find it. Like I want you just hide it in a safe or something. Don't hide it in a safe because that is the one thing for thieves to find. And don't be sharing your passwords, because many you share your password, they're going to be looking at your information. They're going to find out who you are. Plus, they're going to start making changes to your password, so you might want to be careful on that. Number nine, check gas station ATMs and credit card skimmers. So look at these, so look at these people. They just like, the ATM frauds, really? Credit card thieves sometimes place credit card devices onto the credit card when you're using gas pumps or ATMs. They capture your stored credit card information and credit card thieves go back later to get the device. They're placed on a regular credit card. Skimmers are placed on the regular credit card swipe. So if anything looks off about the place you're swiping your credit card, go to another gas station ATM. If you can't find another ATM that does not have the same thing, you're screwed. Personally, I don't. I don't give out my information to any single one of the people I know and expect to keep them a secret. I just, I just give them, I just, just don't be a thief and don't be, don't be a thief. No, just don't be a thief. Just give me a break, alright? Well, me next, next on this, next on the program, do you ever park, do you ever feel like do you ever feel like you're, someone is parking in your handicapped space? Do you ever feel like you want to confront the person that parked that park in the handicapped spot? Do you want to confront them? Do you want to call the police or something? I'm going to give you some tips. And I mean, we say, give me a break. Where we talk about illegal handicapped parking when we come back. Now, I'm going to risk. People getting angry. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna risk seeing people getting angry because someone is parked in a handicapped spot without a sticker. Doesn't it make you mad that you see someone parked in a handicapped spot because you're handicapped? What do you want to do? Confront the person? Call the police? You do one of those things, right? But what if you forget to do that? What if you just don't care? What if you just sit there and say, you know what? Have the spot. I don't care. It's against the law. It's illegal for for people who to park. It's illegal to park for people to park illegally in the handicap spot without a sticker. If you have a sticker, if you have a van or with a sticker on it that says you're handicapped, that tells you that you're handicapped, then you can park in that spot. What is the fine? For this, well, in Texas, you're fined at two hundred fifty dollars, five hundred dollars maximum, five hundred dollars, and seven hundred and fifty dollars. So you're paying almost everything. If you keep on doing this, you will go to jail for this. You will go to jail for illegally parking in a handicapped spot. Like, what if I were to park in a handicapped spot without a sticker? And I would sit there and say, you know what? Go ahead. You should have got here earlier. 
If you're a bus driver who has the handicap sticker, then you're allowed to do that. That's good for bus drivers. They have a handicap sticker because that's good. If you have a van or a minivan and you have a sticker on it, that's good. But don't be acting like a handicap person. Don't be faking it. Don't fake it. Go get a fake sticker, put it on the back of your car, then park right at the sticker, right at the spot. Show up your show off your fake sticker and simply say you have to, and just simply act like a handicap. Don't ever do that. How do you get the handicap stickers? There are ways, thanks to DMV.org, I'm going to show you ways that you can get, that you can be qualified as disability and get the sticker. So parents, if you have children that are, that are handicapped, you need to make them watch this so that you can explain to help you understand. There are plenty of ways. If you want to get a handicap sticker for, for your parents, sir, you've got to listen. Number one, you have to complete the entire application leaving a blank only part your doctor must complete. So if you if you're in the DMV, you want to complete your you leave that part for the doctor. Number two, have your physician or certifying practitioner, I can't pronounce that word. Practitioner, I can't pronounce that, sorry. Sign off your handicap. It should clear out the types of qualified medical procedures. If you're confused, there's little information, just contact the DMV. Ask about the identification requirements and fees. Don't just be all like, I want to get a handicap sticker. Don't just go online, find a handicap sticker. Don't go online, print out a handicap sticker, put it on your car and say, hey, I'm disabled, blah, blah, blah. People are going to think that you're stupid. Be clear on your new requirements. And again, place cards are a good few months, usually about six. So in those six months, if you're if it's expired, you got to go back to DMV and get a new one. Keep the place card with you at all times. In other words, if you get if you disabled it, usually you can use it on any vehicle. You're in, however, if you get handicapped plates, those plates are registered that the vehicle must stay within the vehicle. You can't take it off and then put it in another vehicle. In other words, if you have a different car and you want to use that to park in handicapped space, you must get a different handicap plate for your different car. If you have a minivan, a Ford minivan, you can use that. If you have a Chrysler minivan, you got to get a different one. You can't just take off the plate and then put it back on. You want to waste money? That's fine. Don't go out there and fake it. Now, how do you deal with people who park illegally in the handicap spot? Well, as I said before, I'm going to give you ways. Basically, you got firefightfunds.com. We're going to find out a lot of ways. We're going to find a different source that talk about
Demai.com will help you. We'll help you find out. But don't just be all like, hit them and just don't start a fight and say, I want that in my spot. Don't get in that spot for me. I'm sorry, but you could have got here sooner. But we'll do it down the spot. Start a fight, otherwise you're going to jail. Just say something like, "Excuse me, excuse me, sir or ma'am. I can see you parked in my handicap spot. Can you read the sign? Just act, just say nicely. I don't want to be mean or anything, but if you don't." If you don't politely move to move to a different parking spot, I will have to call the police. It's illegal for people who park in handicapped spots without a license plate. If you have a license plate that says How do you want to report somebody? Just report it to the police. That's the way you do it, but here are some tips, actual tips from different from a website that will help you explain. I shouldn't mention this in my driver's rant. I'll put the link in the description below so that there are plenty of ways. Just stand up for what's right. Just call the police and explain this guy parked my head, this guy or this girl or these guys, or these girls parked in the handicap spot because they didn't follow the rules. The reason why they don't follow the rules is because they don't actually see the sign behind them that says you're not supposed to park in the handicap spot. You're going to park, park in the handicap spot only if. You have a sticker. They just look at the sign and they're like, there are people who just look at the sign and say, oh, I get it. And the people who are like, eh, I don't care. I'm taking that spot anyway. That's what bothers me the most. People who drive, who park in, that's what bothers me the most. People who like park in handicapped spots without permits. The reason why is because they don't understand where you can or can't park. I'm going to show you where you can park tomorrow. But but if you want to qualify as a disability, here are some things you can do. you got to be clear. you got to keep your place card with you at all times. You need to have your physician or a practitioner sign off and handicapped. You have to complete an entire application. Meet the blank spot for your doctor to sign so that I have your doctor sign and everything. If you refuse to sign, then that means then you're screwed. I say to those who are working in handicapped spots, give me a break. We'll be right back. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about Medicare fraud. Why do people... Why do people abuse Medicare? Why do people just rip people off? I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to explain it to you what, what made me say give me a break. Plus, I'm going to give you additional tips on how to avoid Medicare fraud. That's tomorrow, give me a break. Also tomorrow, we're also going to talk about what we're also going to talk about that and more coming up on tomorrow, give me a break. But in the meantime, that's our program for the night. I thank you for watching as we start a new week here. All of us on YouTube, all around the world.
I hope you have a safe Monday. I'll see you all tomorrow.